Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about uh, the error prone PCR and the importance of error prone PCR. Now I assume that you know the basics of polymerase chain reaction, which I'm drawing again. So it's simply a uh, DNA strand is placed and the strand is melted. So here it is the melted DNA strand. After the melting, what we do, we simply add primers, forward and reverse primer. So here comes the forward and reverse primer. After addition of forward and reverse primer, the final step is the polymerization events. So here it says this is the primers and synthesis of rest of the DNA is conducted. So that's how we generate two different templates from one. So this is the polymerase chain reaction. But uh, in this video, we are going to focus on the error prone polymerase chain reaction. Now, during this process of polymerase chain reaction, there are some enzymes required for this polymerization, right? Because it means polymerase chain reaction, right? Now, this polymerase is the most important enzyme for this reaction because it is catalyzing the polymerization of nucleotide sequences. Now, in this case, the enzyme that we use for this polymerization, in this case, suppose let us draw, here it is, the polymerase enzyme. Now, this enzyme is called, usually, TAC polymerase. We can use many type of polymerase enzymes, but usually, TAC polymerase are used. Now, this polymerase means the polymerase enzyme is isolated from Thermus aquaticus, which is a thermotolerant bacteria or high temperature tolerant bacteria because during this process of polymerization the temperature usually set up to 72 degrees Celsius temperature it needs to function in this temp in this higher temperature that's why we need to isolate uh, th thermostable polymerase and this TAC polymerase is a thermostable polymerase there are also many different types of polymerases which are also thermostable, even much more thermostable than TAC polymerase, but they are having less specificity, less uh, productivity of the reaction. That's why we need to choose TAC polymerase which are having higher productivity as well as uh, heat tolerance. Okay. So in this case, so in this kind of polymerase, this TAC polymerase, usually they are having the mechanism of two activities which are the common feature of polymerase enzymes. One is the polymerization. And another one is the rectify, uh, rectification of the polymerization, which is called the proofreading, right? Proofreading activity. So these are the two activities that are present in uh, the basic polymerase enzymes. That is also found in TAC polymerase, proofreading and polymerization. Now, there are some enzymes, there are some polymerase enzymes, which are having this first one, polymerization, which is required, which is the basic thing. But they lack in this proofreading activity. Now, what do we mean by this proofreading activity? During the course of this addition, so let me draw it again in detail. So, if this is the DNA strand, this is another DNA strand. So, I am focusing on one DNA strand only. Primer is provided, primer is providing the hydroxyl so that rest of the template can be made. Now, here during the nucleotide addition, suppose it adds, say, A, G, G, C, suppose it's add here, T, good. C is also good, another C is good, but for the C in, the, in this case, it adds an A. So, this is a mistake, right? This is a mistake. Now, we need to rectify the mistake. Now, during this polymerization event, when polymerase put a mistake or misnucleotide incorporation in this place, it has a tendency to check for this misactivity or bad activity and to cleave this misincorporated nucleotide out of this place. This is called the proofreading activity of polymerase. So it will kick this out. So after that, it will kick this part out so that it can put new nucle nucleotide bases there and then it can carry out this polymerase chain reaction. Right? So, but in this case, there are some uh, polymerase. There are some polymerase which are taken for uh, uh, polymerase chain reaction which lack this proofreading activity. Right? Now, proofreading activity lack can be seen in those cases. There are some uh, polymerase. So, these are called error prone polymerase. 
these are called error prone polymerase which are having the lacking the proofreading activity now as they are lacking this proofreading activity even if they incorporate bad bases or misincorporation of the bases is done they cannot rectify this mistake so as a result of that this misincorporation remains now the remaining of this misincorporation can lead to the problem of generation of variation which is called the mutation right generation of mutation can be caused but this mutation that we see as there is no sequential event of addition of uh, bad nucleotides and means incorporation of nucleotides this mutation is random right so it cause a random mutation in this case due to this misincorporation right so sometimes we use this we intentionally use this uh, lack of proofreading polymerases why because sometimes we need to generate just random variations in the dna sequences and sometimes we need to incorporate mutations in the dna sequence to understand the function of some special genes in those case we can carry out pcr using this error prone polymerases so that it lead to the random mutation event generation after that we can study our uh, system right and also uh, in some cases we need to produce randomized gene libraries we need to produce randomized gene libraries now for the production of this randomized gene libraries we can also use this error prone polymerase so the major function of using error prone polymerase is first to create random mutation to uh, put the mutation or to have a mutagenesis experiment and also for the randomized gene libraries so that we can clone it and we can make the versatility of the gene libraries we can increase the versatility of gene libraries okay so that's the process of error prone pcr and that's the importance of error prone pcr and i hope that's helpful thank you